my last video, it's got to be six or seven months at least. Uh, but a lot has happened in that six, seven months of uh, winter. <laughs> and uh, uh, now that it's over, in full swing of getting this RV project done, um, I did get the engine and the transmission mounted in the RV. Um, the full weight of the engine and transmission are on the chassis. So, another major milestone. Uh, so, let's see what it took to get me there. This is where I started out last year, same place. Uh, so, got a little bit done this weekend. Um, getting an engine ready to put in place. <coughs> that uh, engine hoist is so huge. So I got uh, got it up on ramps and blocks and there's nothing sketchy about that at all but it gives me the about an extra oh geez I don't know 10 inches for that engine hoist to fit in here because that's really the biggest obstacle is getting the engine hoist to clear all this stuff it's so it's so huge but the cross member still has me concerned. Um, transmission sitting on a hydraulic lift so I can, once the engine's in place, I can connect that up to it. But I do worry about this cross member right there because, uh, well, the oil pan will fit behind it. I'm pretty sure, pretty confident about that. But, uh, it's just getting it in there and all this all this stuff up here this board that can come out and the doghouse cover that can come out so I, that'll be all open to the top but I think I'm gonna have to have my boys come over and help me and we're gonna have to heave that oil pan over the uh, over the cross member because I can't lift up too high on the uh, on the uh, with the engine with the engine hoist because it's just so damn big <clears throat> and I'll have to sling up the engine with a short chain like this which that really bugs me because there's all that puts a lot of force on those uh, those lifting tabs not so much this one because it's in the right position for pulling but this one over here it um, all that weight is trying to bend it over but it's gonna have to be short which might be sketchy we'll see hopefully that happens next weekend Maybe we'll get that in next weekend, at least inside the engine compartment and blocked up. Because there's a lot of there's a lot of figuring I have to do, you know, for driveline angles. So I'm just gonna have to block it up inside there, get it where it needs to be, and uh, build engine mounts. The journey continues. Eek. So what I ended up doing is I welded up this. It's um, a bracket that fits over the 
um, lift rings on the engine and uh, got this clevis on there and that gave me the shortest possible distance between the top of the engine and the uh, arm on the hoist and um, it reduced it reduced the amount of space that that took up I had to get it as small as possible but this was a lifesaver um, it took I mean this thing didn't bend at all with the weight of the engine on it was it's pretty stout and you know now the shear forces are just straight down and it's not yanking the tabs in so this was important. So I'm under the RV and some of the things that dictate where this motor was going to go in here, um, the oil pan was one. So right now, right now I have it set where I got clearance about, I don't know, a couple fingers worth or a fingers worth of space between this cross member and the oil pan. And I have it temporarily held in place using the original engine mounts there and over here I just have some temporary spacers in here but what I got to do next is establish the driveline angle because the this face the plane here has to match the the plane on the um, the yoke of the uh, differential so what I plan on doing is like I said I just have this temporarily held in place I did a rough um, calculation where it's it it's pretty much the angle what it that it needs to be but I'm not gonna really dial in the final one until I get the transmission on so right now I have the transmission on a hydraulic lift back here behind me and I'm gonna raise it into position and made up with the the face here and you can see where I had to cut that relief up there because it wouldn't fit uh, the transmission would uh, smack into the bottom of the floor because it's so big so next step for me is to get that 
transmission made it up to here and get the angle correct and then continue on with the uh, rear mounts. So like I said, I had the transmission on a hydraulic lift table and I'll probably shim it up to kind of match the angle that the engine's at right now. It does tip down a little bit, which it's supposed to according to the uh, yoke on the uh, differential. But it may move up or down, but uh, next step is to get the transmission made it up. thing I forgot to mention is that uh, I got the engine uh, online where it's supposed to be like you know it's perfectly down the center with of the uh, chassis um, I did end up offsetting it and I may have mentioned that before but it ended up being about two and a quarter inches that way because of the clearance of the injector pump or the injector lines and you got all this stuff here and I had to clear and I got more than enough room I may have it may jiggle <laughs> a little bit so I just have to be conscious of that and uh, make any uh, modifications needed to allow for the engine to move I will have to cut just a wee bit out here because you can see it's it's pretty tight back here so we're gonna cut some relief in there the transmission dipstick will come out in this area here and it actually attaches to this tab but right now these are just these are just here for safety and the whole weight of the engine is on the chassis so on we go
we got the front engine mount all welded up here ready for powder coat I think it looks okay um, I mean I never claim to be a professional welder but uh, hot but I think it turned out okay and I got about five pounds of weld in it but should do the trick using uh, using the yes welder um, I can't say enough about this I mean like I said before I'm no professional welder but uh, it really worked well so while well, that's out for powder coating, the sun's going to powder coat it. I'll finish getting the mounting brackets socked in here. i got to put some gusseting on them as well. Uh, weld that into the frame. You can see here. Where am I looking here? Yeah, right there. I'll get some... Uh, gussets in there to to really support that, and we'll have a we'll have a front engine mount.
All right, so just a recap of what I've done here. It's all bolted in now. Engine's bolted in front. Um, I got quarter inch plates that are welded to the frame on either side. And that's all gusseted. Never mind those welds. They should do the trick. And then this crossmember bolts in between them. It really was the only practical place that I could really weld a crossmember in. But um, it's all in place. Front's done. You can see it's offset. And it's still a little tight by the uh, injectors, but I think the rear end of the engine is going to be moving over just a tad, so front is done. Now on to the back. It's all mounted in. And here is a shot of that front engine mount. Got some plates welded onto the frame on either side with a weldment that spans the two with the front engine mount bolted to that. It really worked out pretty nice. And Like I said, all the weight is on the chassis. I mean, yeah, all the weight of the engine and transmission are, are on the chassis. And I got the uh, transmission mounts in here. I mean, it's really hard to see because they're kind of buried in the frame, but you can see how they attach to the transmission mounting areas. And then they bolt through some uh, new old stock uh, Bluebird bus engine mounts. I mean, this is how they mount them in school buses. And there's a big rubber bushing between the mount on the transmission and the bracket that bolts onto the frame. Um, they're probably overbuilt, but um, better safe than sorry, I guess. But as you can see, I got my nifty bracket here, and that's coming out today. There's like zero weight on that now. But um, it just barely fits. But it fits. I'm going to crawl around underneath the 
the RV here, but just to give you a, a little better shot of how these engine mounts are mounted or how they look. I mean, that's you got an upper one, big rubber bushing, and then the part that mounts to the frame, and that's isolating the vibrations, and that it's all bolted through the frame. Let's see if I can get it on this side. You can see this side's a little bit longer. It's two and a half inches longer to offset. I think they turned out nice. The, the the frame bracket seems to be drooping down. I don't know if that when I welded these up, they were they were perfectly square. So I don't know if it's the frame that might have just a slight tilt to it. I don't know if I need to address it. I don't think I'm gonna. Uh, but overall, I'm pretty happy. And like I said, I could have did this without. 3d cad because it took measurements and i must have measured right and everything bolts up like it was meant to be there pretty cool from concept to reality i i don't know how i would have done this without 3d cad i don't know how they did this shit years ago with 2d and pens and pencils and paper <laughs> I don't know how the hell they did it, but uh, it made life simple. So what's next? Well, the drive shaft is next. Um, I got the um, drive shaft, the original drive shaft from the RV. Uh, it's actually in great shape. There's zero rust on it. Um, I'll be taking that to a drive uh, machine specialists are called in Green Bay and I'm gonna have them look at what I got as far as the, tra the, the drive shaft from the RV I, I guess I worry about um, it handling the torque um, and here's here's some video of the drive shafts right here Okay, so here's the drive shafts. Uh, this uh, relatively clean one is the RV drive shaft, and this rusty piece of crap is what was originally in the bus. Now I was worried about, um, you know, the U joints up in front and how they bolt to the um, transmission yoke, but surprisingly and I didn't measure but I think the u-joints are actually the same size you know the the spider in the middle the the bearing caps and all that I I believe are the same diameter same width and might bolt in so what I'm hoping the best case scenario is that the back half of the drive shaft is unaltered and the front half gets shortened um, they re-weld and balance and put the u-joint in the front and that's all I got to do it appears that the driveline angles are gonna be okay but if there's any specs that are outside the operating recommendations I think I can adjust where the center section will mount to take up excessive driveline angles or, or what have you. That's all to be determined. But like I said, the best case scenario for me is to be able to reuse this. I don't know if it's going to be able to handle the torque. It's safe to say twice as much torque. But when you look at this, I mean, and it might be deceiving, is the bus... Uh, drive shaft larger diameter yeah maybe by about half inch quarter inch who knows that might be just might be just fatter from all the rust and corrosion god is it rusty but anyways um yeah that's where the drive shaft is at but that's relatively straightforward 
get her fixed up and bolt her in. All right, so, I mean, will it work? I don't know. Um, we'll see. So after the drive shaft is uh, complete, and a lot of this stuff is going to be happening in parallel, but I've contacted Jason at Transmission Tuners. I got to get with him and uh, order the kit for the TCM. I'm going to have to build a custom harness for the TCM to hook up to the sensors and the OBD2 port and all that stuff. Um, I got power steering, power brakes. Well, that's actually one system because it's it's hydro boost. So I got to get from the uh, hydraulic pump, steering pump, call it what you want. I got to get that plumbed in um, to the system. There's also transmission cooling. I think I'm going to use the original, um, I guess it's a, a cooler from the bus, but it's a, a coolant to, to transmission fluid cooler. It's essentially just a box where the uh, coolant flows through, you know, the cool side of the radiator goes through the box and then the oil lines must circulate through it and cool it. That'll be the primary cooling and I'll probably need um, some uh, uh, secondary cooling, a secondary uh, cooler with fans mounted somewhere or one in front of the uh, radiator and uh, charge our cooler and all that stuff so you got that. Um, fuel lines gotta drain the tank it's still full of gasoline I think the gas lines are huge enough I mean it's at least 3 eighths inch diameter I think that 454 probably suck more fuel than this diesel is gonna. So I would think that that's adequate. Uh, return lines. Uh, yeah, there's a, a lot coming up, but it's not gonna be nearly as difficult and backbreaking as getting this engine in. So, like I said before, this is a huge milestone for me. It fits. It the way it fits is I'm just happy as heck. The way it fits because of all like the air compressor it all fits under the floor everything is rel it's still relatively accessible um, all bets are off once that radiator is installed that's another thing got to install the radiator um, I'm probably gonna have to move that out way further than what it was in the bus um, I'm not too concerned it's extending uh, coolant hoses um, and charge air tubes just need to be extended, get some stuff bead rolled and some silicone fittings and then we'll be fine. And then maybe actually extend the shroud that goes around the fan so the fan is in the shroud the way it's supposed to be and it draws all the air in through the front. So there's more to come. I don't know if I'm going to get it running this year, but man it's going to be damn close. So. We'll see what happens this summer. Um, I think it was a year ago, almost to the day, where I first got the engine out of the bus last year. So, it, it's taken a long time. Uh, but, I wish I could retire right now and just do this, because this is fun. Work sucks. <laughs> so. Stay tuned, there's more to come, and um, uh, it's getting near the end, at least mechanically. Then the wife can have some fun and do the inside. Whatever. I kid. It's going to be cool. Alright, thanks. Thanks for watching. 